Hello there. I'm glad you're joining me again for this edition number 43 of Joy Sightings. Today I read three parables from the wit and wisdom of Safed the Sage, and they are The Time for Weariness, Crumbs and Bubbles, and The Barber Shop. The Time for Weariness There came to me the notable men of the congregation where I serve, and they said unto me, Safed, thou dwellest too far from the synagogue. Behold, we have prepared for thee an house hard by the synagogue. Come thou, Keturah, and thine household, and all that thou hast, and dwell in the house we have prepared for thee. Then were our hearts glad, for we had lived for the space of three years in an hired house, and for all it had been comfortable, it had not been home. And we found it a place of weeds, and we left it with a hedge of hollyhocks round about it. Now there was an Ethiopian maiden in the kitchen of Keturah, and at that time her sister-in-law's mother fell sick, and she left us for a season. And while she was gone, even during the time of the moving, Keturah hired another Ethiopian, whose name was Lottie. And she was in her stature a giantess, and in her disposition like unto a mule. And Keturah was as a child beside her. And Lottie was insolent and idle, and the more idle she was permitted to be, the more insolent she became. And Keturah stood in fear of her. And the children of Keturah said, Fire her, and let her not have dominion over thee, for she is an ogress and a savage. But Keturah said, Not till after the moving, lest a worse thing befall me. And the days of the moving came. There came likewise the days of packing. There came likewise the days of unpacking. And men came and did what could be hired to do, for the men of my congregation are generous men, And they said, Labor not thou nor Keturah, but hire it done, and we will pay for it. And we sought to do even as they said, for they are generous men. But there was much hard work to be done. And I spake harshly to Lottie, and I said, Take thou hold of this box, and lift it with me. And she said, Yes, sir. And she lifted, and I said, Go thou to the basement, and bring me hither an hammer, and see that thou hasten. And she said, Yes, sir. And she went and came again. And the more harshly I spake, the more meek she became. And I was minded to be harsh with her for being insolent to Keturah. And the harder she worked, the more amiable she got. And this continued for the space of two weeks, till we were settled in our new home, and Lottie was gentle and obedient and mighty useful. And Keturah beheld with great admiration. And it came to pass on the afternoon of the second Saturday that I spake kindly to Lottie and said, Lottie, Art thou not tired? And she laughed loud and long, and she said, I never gets tired till I sets down. Now when she thus spoke, I could have kissed her, for I have known so many good people who start something and get tired almost immediately. And I composed a blessing for those who are like Lottie in this, that hard work appalleth them not, and they are not quitters. And this is the blessing. Blessed are they who, having begun the work, do not get tired 
till the work is done, and they sit down. Crumbs and Bubbles Now I was meditating on the things that seem to be trivial, and how when they are many, they become an heap so that they block the amenities of life. And I listened and I heard the patter of little feet, and I stopped my work, and the daughter of the daughter of Keturah ran into mine arms, and pulled my beard, and kissed me upon both of my cheeks, and once beside, and she said, Grandpa, on this day I am three years old, and behold, there hath been given unto me a doll, and a cake with three candles thereupon. And I said unto her, It was a glad day when God sent thy mother unto us, and another glad day three years ago when he did send thee. And behold, the years have gone so fast that when I hold thee in mine arms, I know not if it be thee or thy mother. And she said, Grandpa, behold, it snoweth. Take me out, that I may behold the snow. So I took her out, wrapped in her double garments, and she rejoiced in the snow. And she beheld how it came down in her face in what she called little bubbles, for they melted straightway, and how it fell upon my coat in what she called little crumbs. For it is on this matter that she fitteth the words that she knoweth to her new experiences, and oft do I marvel at the way in which she findeth a word for the thing she hath not known. And I considered her use of the words bubbles and crumbs of snow. And we went within the house, and we watched through the window, and we saw the snow strike the window in bubbles, and fall outside in crumbs. And the crumbs and the bubbles were both very little things. Now when the morning was come, behold, the snow was piled at my door in a great drift. And I listened, and behold, there were no trains. And I waited, and behold, there were no mails and certain of my neighbors had no coal and could not get it. And I considered and said, Behold the crumbs of snow and the bubbles of snow that fell in the face of the little maiden and on the overcoat of her grandfather. How small they were one by one, and behold, they stop the trains. And I considered that it is even so with many things in life that are small in themselves, but when multiplied they become habits that men cannot break, or grievances that rend friendships asunder, even as great drifts are made of bubbles and crumbs of snow. This parable, called The Barber Shop, forms kind of a bookend with the one I read in episode 42, called The Bay Rum. The Barber Shop I was grieved by the follies and sins of men, and it seemed to me that all men were wicked and all women were foolish. And there were certain days wherein there came to me men and women whose deeds merited reproof. And I reproved them sharply, yea, I told them every one his sin. And there followed a day which was the Sabbath, and the thing had got on my nerve. And I went into the sanctuary, and I stood up in the sight of the whole congregation, and I rebuked the people for their backslidings and their transgressions. And I feared not their faces, neither spared I them in my chastisement. And certain of the congregation spake to me, saying, 
thou didst rub it in a little too vigorously. And I said, Nay, I speak as the prophets of God must speak. I will not prophesy smooth things. I will cry aloud and show the people their transgressions. Yea, the word of God in my mouth shall not be as it were a mouth of meal, but as a two-edged sword, dividing asunder the joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now on the morrow I said to Keturah, I go to the barber shop. And Keturah said, Go thou, my lord, but another time go thou on the day that precedeth the Sabbath, for thy hair and thy beard showed yesterday that they needed to be trimmed. So I went to the barber shop, and I sat on a great throne with a bib about me, while the barber did his duty. And I beheld, and there hung before me a leathern case, wherein were many razors, and they were exceedingly sharp, and upon the shelf were many pairs of shears, and besides these were certain pairs of clippers. And I said to myself, Here also is a man who needeth sharp instruments in his business, even as I do. And I spake to the barber, and I said, Behold, Thou dost use in thy business only the things that are sharp. And the barber answered and said, Not on thy life. Thou hast another think coming. The razor and the shears and the clippers represent only a small part of my equipment. I use cold cream that sootheth, and bay rum that feeleth mighty good after a shave, and ointment that healeth wheresoever the razor goeth over a place where the skin hath any manner of hurt. Yea, and I have lotions, and talcum powder, and lots of stuff to make a fellow feel good. Otherwise I must go out of business. I could never run this shop with sharp instruments alone. And I meditated much on what the barber said. And I said to my soul, If the barber needeth healing lotions and emollients in his business, much more do I. I will not attempt hereafter to run my business with sharp instruments only. And I knew that God had sent me to the barber shop that I might learn this lesson. Yea, and also because I needed an haircut. And I told it to Keturah, and Keturah spake to me and said, Tell it to all men who preach, for among them are many men who possess as little wisdom as doth my Lord. Yea, and there may be a few who know even less.